now we will consider the electric field due to equatorial point of dipole so here you can see we have considered PAB is an equilateral triangle in which angle PAB is theta and angle PBA is also theta so let us assume AB is our dipole so we have written AB is 2A so C we have chosen the midpoint of our dipole so obviously since the distance between A to B is 2A and C is the midpoint so obviously A to C will be A and B to C will be A and unlike the axial point concept we have here also we have chosen P is a far point from the dipole and the distance between P and C is R so since angle triangle PCA is a right angle triangle so we can use Pythagoras theorem so as to calculate the distance PA as well as PB fine so since BC or AC is A and distance PC is R so obviously using Pythagoras theorem PA and PB will be wrote under R square plus A square we have written here now in the dipole AB we have placed one minus charge at point A one plus charge plus Q at point B and at this equatorial point we have placed one positive charge let us assume any charge maybe I have written plus Q you can you can write any charge fine so since one positive charge is placed on that point and here also we have a positive charge so these two positive charges will repel each other so we have drawn one E plus Q direction E plus Q direction on this uh, upper upward direction why we have chosen this upward direction because this charge will repel this charge that is why but here we have a negative charge so that positive charge will be attracted by this negative charge so that is why E minus Q we have directed in that direction fine so this theta and this theta according to the alternate angles we have write this theta and this and that to parallel lines so this this will be theta so that will be theta so E minus Q using the resolution of vectors so E minus Q what we can write E minus Q cos theta on that direction and E plus Q we can write E plus Q cos theta for the upper direction so E equatorial is the resultant of this E plus Q and N minus Q so we have using the resolution of vector or using the parallelogram law the E equatorial is the resultant of E plus Q and E minus Q so that is the equatorial electric field so we have to calculate the expression of this electric field at this equatorial point due to this dipole so now according to the figure we can write E plus Q is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R square plus S square so E plus Q is that direction E plus Q is that direction so that direction what we can write this E plus Q will be directed along B to P so along BP so vector sign is from B to P and E minus Q is this C minus Q is acted along PA so what will be the difference between E plus Q and E minus Q only one plus charge one minus charge so if you consider them only the magnitude of these two charges now simply we can write Q by R square plus A square because since we have placed one minus charge over A point so that is why minus charge has come so for B point only plus charge has come so the magnitude of this E plus Q and E minus Q will be same so equatorial point we can write E plus Q and E minus Q cos theta plus E plus Q cos theta so since E plus Q magnitude of E plus Q and E minus Q is same since since the mod value of E plus Q is equal to the mod value of E minus Q so in place of E plus Q we can put E minus Q or in place of E minus Q we can put E plus Q so what we can write we can write E equatorial will be 2 say 2 E plus Q cos theta we have put E minus Q is equal to E plus Q that is why E plus Q cos theta again plus E plus Q cos theta so 2 E plus Q cos theta so 2 E plus Q is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q by R square plus A square and from the triangle cos theta is 
base by hypotenuse so base was our a hypotenuse was root under r square plus a square so we can put cos square cos theta is equal to a by root under r square plus a square fine so 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 2 q a by r square plus of a square all to the power 3 by 2 3 by 2 because here we have r square plus a square means it is power 1 here we have r square plus a square it is power half so according to the rules of indices we can write r square plus whole square a square whole square to the power 1 plus half that is r square plus a square to the power 3 by 2 fine got it So now, now 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, 2a into q by r square plus a square to the power 3 by 2 we can write 2a into q means 2a means length of dipole q is charge length of dipole into charge means dipole moment p we can write. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, p by r square plus a square whole to the power 3 by 2 we can write so that will be our expression of the e equatorial means electric field due to equatorial point of a dipole we can write 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 p by r square plus s square whole to the power 3 by 2 unlike the axial point in case of axial point we had used one special case now that for a short dipole when r square is very very greater than 2 a square then simply we can neglect the term a square so unlike this here also we can apply that for a special case for a short dipole for a short dipole r square is very very greater than 2 a square simply since you can follow the previous slide so that you can understand for a short dipole, the distance uh, r is very very greater than 2a. So, r square will be very very greater than 2a square. So, r square term, whenever we are taking r square term along with a square term, simply we can neglect the a square term. So, if in this expression, if we can neglect a square, then what we can write? r square to the power 3 by 2. So, that 2 and that 2 will cancel. So, what we can write? r cube simply. So, what will be then the expression? P equatorial will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 P by R Q. So that will be the expression of electric field due to axial uh, due to equatorial point of a dipole. So for a short dipole it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 P by R Q. But in general the expression is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 p by r square plus s square to the power 3 by 2 this is the general expression this is the special case whenever we have short dipole then then and then only we can use this expression otherwise you have to derive up to this fine clear What was Gauss theorem? What was Gauss theorem? In part 4 maybe I have discussed about Gauss theorem. So Gauss theorem was according to the Gauss theorem electric flux was Q by epsilon 0 and from the definition of flux we can write electric flux is equal to closed surface integration E into ds that was the electric flux so simply what we can write phi e is equal to surface integration e ds is equal to q by epsilon 0 so that is nothing but the Gauss theorem Gauss theorem states that the total flux encloses by closed surface is 1 by epsilon not times the total charge means f phi e is equal to q by epsilon 0 now we have to prove this Gauss theorem so proof find proof of the Gauss theorem 
So we know that electric field is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by f square is the expression of electric field. Now flux or change in flux is equal to EDS. EDS. So flux we can write surface integration EDS. Fine. Surface integration EDS. Or you can put d phi over here. So phi will be phi means flux will be e will be out of the integration and ds will remain there. So simply now you have to put the value of electric field on that side 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square and integration ds. Integration ds will be s. So s is nothing but the surface, surface area. So surface area for a Gauss theorem, Gauss theorem was applicable only for the spherical surface. So the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square. So what we can write? 4 pi r square. So 4 pi, 4 pi will cancel, r square, r square will cancel. So that will remain q by epsilon 0. So means flux is equal to q by epsilon 0. Means from here we can write what? We can write total flux, electric flux is equal to q by epsilon 0. Means this proves the Gauss theorem. So that was the Gauss theorem. Gauss was Gauss theorem was the total flux encloses by a closed surface is 1 by epsilon not times the total charge encloses by the surface. So this was the actual statement of the Gauss theorem. This was not the Gauss theorem. I have discussed in part 4 that from the definition of the elective flux we can write electric flux is equal to surface integration or rather closed surface integration of electric field into surface area. So that was with that that we can write from the basic definition of electric flux and this is the statement of the Gauss proposed. So combining this Gauss theorem along with this along with the basic concepts of the electric flux we can modify the Gauss theorem like this. So it is not like this. So to prove Gauss theorem you have to prove phi e is equal to surface integral EDS. Not like this. Only you have to prove phi e is equal to q by epsilon 0. Because that statement was not proposed by the Gauss. Gauss was proposing only this part. So that was from the basic definition of flux. Flux was what? A number of field lines passing through a cross sectional area is flux. So flux is nothing but the measure of electric field lines in a particular place. So since Gauss theorem is a Gauss theorem or electric field lines always makes closed surface that is why in a closed surface what we can write we can simply take the surface integration or rather closed surface integration of electric field and and surface area is the flux that is why flux is written in terms of closed surface integral e into ds fine so for a point charge for any point charge electric field is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square so change in flux since we have taken ds so phi also we have to consider in a small term so that is why d phi means very small amount of flux is e into ds so d phi e is equal to surface integration e ds also we can write so from that here we have a small quantity so from this small quantity we have to extract the uh, bigger term so bigger term will be extracting by integ by integrating this term now so if d phi is this, so simply phi will be integration this. So phi is equal to e into integration ds. So putting the value of e for a point as e was 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square and ds. ds is s. Integration ds is x. ds is s. So integration dr will be r. Integration dy will be y. So like this, integration ds is s. So s is what? s is our surface area what surface area we should take we should take the surface area of a sphere why sphere because Gauss theorem is applicable only for spherical surface so for sphere has an area 4 pi r square that is why we have chosen 4 pi r square here so 4 pi and 4 pi r square and r square will cancel out so q by epsilon 0 will remain so means this proves the Gauss theorem fine thank you